Why, hello, everybody. As you can see, I've decided to do rights next. I dearly love this GIF. I would like to know the story behind this. Why? How? What? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We have stuff to do. So, resident rights. All residents, and remember, when we talk residents, we're talking about people in the long-term care setting. All residents have automatic delineated rights upon admission. Examples are uh, informed of treatment options and the right to refuse them, privacy. Now, all, all patients have rights in any medical facility. These are specific rights for long-term care. So, why? Again, right? All patients have rights. But uh, in long-term care, the facility is their home. Um, in a hospital, if you eventually refuse treatments long enough, they're going to tell you to take a hike because, you know, somebody else could be using this bed that you're really not using. But in long-term care, this is their house. So I have just as much right to tell them what to do in their own home as I have to come in and sit down on your sofa and tell you how to do stuff. So that, that's the theory behind that. They have specific rights. Now, a lot of these are going to seem kind of duh and stupid. So I want to take you back to a point in my life many moons ago. Um, back in the days when we were writing checks still uh, for stuff. And uh, at a restaurant, I'd gone to a lunch with a friend. And there was a sign that said, uh, ID must be presented for checks. And then below that was another sign that said, ID presented must match the, identifi the uh, identity on the check. And I was like, I said to Richard, my friend who has this rule for him, name for him, uh, it was amazing to me that somebody actually put a sign up that said that, that you had, the IDs had to match. And he said, you know, the fact that they felt they had to put a sign up there indicates how much trouble they're having with this problem. So, this is not an official rule, or, yeah, this is not an official statement, not an official rule. This is like Owen's triage dictum. So, Richard's rule is, the amount of effort put into noting a rule is directly proportional to the amount of work counteracting people not following it. So, if there is a published law, a sign, something notifying you of what the rules are, it means enough violations occurred that it made it more worthwhile to go to the effort of codifying this and posting it than to set than to just keep correcting it as it came up. So bear that in mind. Um, again, resident, we're going to go through the resident rights somewhat. Um, not all of them. We're not going to do them bit by bit. We're going to do them in sets because. Depending on how you count them, residents have 43 separate rights, so we're not going to go through all those. So, the resident, the first right is the resident rights statement, which is that all residents have the right to dignified existence, self-determination, and communication and access to persons and services inside and outside the facility. Uh, the facility also has to create and maintain an environment that protects resident rights and allows as much independence as possible. They also has to, they also, wow, good English on my part. The facility also has to provide equal access to all residents regardless of diagnosis, severity of condition, or payment source. Severity of condition is a little bit iffy. Sometimes that is kind of a gray area. Um, we will we'll clear it. We'll go into that more later. Um, another right is that these stated rights that they have do not supersede or take away from their rights as a U.S. citizen or a citizen of their state. So, you know, you don't give up your right to uh, freedom of speech just because you've entered the uh, nursing home. Excuse me. Uh, the facility may not interfere with, curtail, or coerce the free execution of resident rights and must promote the rights. Uh, so now I'm going to kind of group these together at this point because otherwise we'll be here like all day. Um, quality of life rights. 
the facility must promote an environment that maintains or enhances the quality of life of a resident. Um, and the resident must be treated with the fullest measure of dignity, consideration, and respect. And again, I want to call you back to Richard's rule here. This sounds super obvious, but the fact that they had to that they felt they had to codify this means people weren't doing it. So we have to treat people like people, and we have to make their living conditions pleasant. Uh, we have to provide we. You know, the facility has to provide services and activities to the highest practicable physical, mental, and psychosocial well-being of each resident. Now we have dignity. Each resident has the right to be treated with dignity and respect. Um, and these are actually all itemized and listed. So, as examples, these are not all the examples, uh, they have the right to make their own schedule uh, within, well actually, they have the right to make their own schedule. Um, they have the right to live as independently as possible. They have the right to be treated the same regardless of diagnosis, severity of condition, or pay your source. Uh, continuing independence. They have the right to choose what to wear, eat, and how to spend their time. They have the right to choose their own care team. You know, They don't have to use the facility's care team. If they want to use their family doctor, that's their right. They can do that. Um, now, they don't, the facility doesn't have to aid in that, as far as, like, if, if there were, there are, there are, I mean, I was going to say, if there are doctors, there are doctors and medical practitioners available in the facility. If the resident chooses to go to their own doctor, how they get there is, is their problem. The facility does not have to, say, transport them to their doctor of choice. They can go, there's nothing, you know, nothing stopping them, but the family has to organize that or something. Uh, they have the right to organize and participate in groups and activi activities, activities, sound like Cartman, uh, inside and outside the facility. They have the right to participate in their own care. Uh, they have the right to receive adequate and appropriate care. They have the right to be informed of diagnoses. They have the right to participate in assessment, care plans, remember care plans, and a discharge, uh, you know, up to and including the right to refuse. If a resident says, you know what, I'm out of here. I don't want any part of this. I'm gone. There's nothing that the facility can do to stop them, short of they have been found to be legally incompetent to make their own decisions and a danger to themselves or somebody else. That's the only right way you can actually stop somebody from leaving a facility. They have right to information. Uh, patients have a right to see and read their medical information. Uh, and you also have that right. That's not just a resident right. That is also a patient right. You have a right to see your own medical information. You may um, actually must answer any questions you can regarding patient's condition, treatment options, and likely outcomes. This is referred to uh, in the federal code as informed consent. So what is informed consent, real briefly here? Uh, it's a process in which a healthcare provider educates a patient about the risks, benefits, and alternatives of a given procedure or intervention. The patient must, that's a very loud play. I'm gonna to try to take that out when I do this, but over, if you hear that overhead, sorry. Patients must be competent to make a decision. That's iffy, that's iffy. Um, patients can refuse, people with exceptionally extreme dementia can refuse treatment. So that's, I'm not sure that I would agree with that statement, but it is in the, de in the uh, legal definition. Uh, it's an ethical and legal obligation. And this goes so far as to say for people, I, I have been in the situation, I will say, where I have a, a patient who is refusing uh, enteral nutrition, they're not eating, and I've had to have a conversation with them where I'm like, you need to understand that your risk of dying is extremely high if you do not take hydration and nutrition through this process. Are you comfortable with that? And if they say yes, then that that's it. You know, I have to I have to tell them the risks. 
I have to tell them these are the potential benefits of the procedure, these are p the potential risks of the procedure, and then let them make their decision from that point. They have the right to refuse. Uh, all patients have the right to refuse treatment. Uh, medical nutritional therapy is a treatment. If the therapy, the therapy, if the patient doesn't want a diet, they don't have to be on that diet. Um, if a, now to cover you, you know, li legally speaking here, if a patient is non-compliant, um, attempt a counseling session. Talk to them. Find out why they don't want to follow the diet. Um, tell them what's the benefit of the diet and see if you can come to a compromise of some sort or get them to work with the diet. If that doesn't work, you know, if they refuse, um, nothing, nothing sticks, document the attempt and their response. Tell them, you know, again, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. So you document that you tried, you document the education, and then you document their response. And from that point forward, you just honor the wishes of the, of the resident. Residents have a right to privacy, um, including who gets to know about them, up to include like if they're even in the facility. Uh, there are times when somebody will call and say, I want to talk about my mom and how she's eating. And your answer is, I'm sorry, I don't have the authority to give out information. If they don't want to know, if they don't want people to discuss, to, if they don't want a particular person to um, discuss them, you can't do it. Uh, they even have a do not publish, at least within BCS. Or say, do not publish. I don't know if that's a industry-wide thing or not. And that means literally nothing about them. We don't put their name up. We don't put a, any identifying information about them anywhere in the building. The... The chart, that we most of it's electronic, but there's still some physical part of a physical chart there. Literally, it'll have the room number, and then it says, do not publish on it. The tray ticket for the meals has the room number. It says, do not publish. Um, so, yeah, you they have a, a lot of control over who gets to know about them. You don't have any authority to discuss a patient or a patient treatment unless that patient has specifically given you permission to do so, or you're communicating with a p person who has been given that authority. Uh, remember the uh, medical power of attorney. If you're talking to, if you're speaking to the medical power of attorney, that person has the authority to ask you questions about, about somebody, and they have the authority to designate somebody else as having the right to know. They have the right to be secure in their finances and possessions. Uh, they have the right to manage personal finances or designate someone to do that, power of attorney. Um, but some people uh, in a nursing home are there for physical reasons, but mentally they're just fine. And they pay their own bills, run their, their estate out of their room. Uh, uh, they have the right to be informed of what is covered by Medicare and Medicaid and how to apply. Um, again, a lot of this has come from people who were shady in the past and shifty. They would take money and then bill them. They would, they would take the Medicaid money, something that should have been covered or would be covered by Medicaid. They would take that payment and then they would bill the patient. So they have, within BCS again at least, they get an itemized bill every month that sort of, whether it's the resident or it's the power of attorney at lists what uh, you know all services what Medicaid paid what Medicaid did not pay um, what the balance is if there is one and they have the right to bring and keep items from home um, you know from family heirlooms things that are important to them jewelry especially things like wedding rings um, pictures of family. Now, we do encourage people to not do that simply because, uh, well, one, there are shady people in the world, and I have to be honest. I know I'm partial. You know, I, I, I am a geriatrician. I find the idea of somebody that would steal from somebody's, like, someone's grandma I, repugnant. But it does happen. 
Also, it's important to remember these people are do have dementia. They're confused. Sometimes these things get lost. We might, you know, this person might lose their wedding ring that they got 80 years ago that cost several thousand dollars. I mean, sorry, I, we, I don't know what to tell you. We, you know, she lost it somewhere. Um, happens a lot. Um, so if there's an item that, that, you know, they do have lock boxes available as well. So if they want to keep it with them, but keep it secure, we have lock boxes available for that. Um, but yeah, you can bring pretty much anything from home uh, that doesn't violate other standards or codes. And representative rights, finally. Uh, again, we did talk about this earlier, but we'll make again. Uh, if, a resi if a resident has been declared incompetent legally, uh, they may designate a representative. If they can't or they won't, um, a rights may be transferred to a representative by authority of the court. Now, the resident may rescind representative rights at any time unless those rights have been assigned to another person by the court. But again, it's very, very hard to lock somebody away and keep them away and keep them from other people. It's just very difficult. It, it does not happen like it does in the movies. Guys, that is, in a really, really, really small nutshell, that's resident rights. If you have questions about it, you know, feel free to give me a call. Give me a call. I guess you can. Uh, contact me. Uh, let me know if you have questions, you want to follow up on something. I'd be happy to talk to you. Otherwise, we will cover uh, regulations next time. See you then. Bye.